let's start. Yeah, let me just, let's continue. Um, so we are currently in chapter four. So last time we were talking about uh, designing the control unit. So <coughs> originally we were able to come up with the data path design, the full data path design, okay? and with the insertions of the different uh, control lines, the blue ones, which represents basically uh, uh, somehow flags on what to do. Okay? And uh, the missing link here is basically uh, how these uh, control lines will be activated. When will these control lines be activated? Uh, who will control uh, which component, which functional unit will control uh, the values of these control lines? Okay? And recall also that what we're doing is we're designing a data path. And we have different three classes of instructions. We have the, uh, what you call this, the uh, R instructions, arithmetic instructions, we have the load and store instruction for memory access, and then the conditional branch instruction. And we integrated them into one data path. Okay? Now, for the next part, which is designing the control unit, okay? and the, the important thing to remember is that the ALU here is, <coughs> is a common component that is used by the three classes of instructions. Okay? It's used by the arithmetic, by the load, and the branch. Okay? The, okay? So there should be a way to be able to control the ALU. Uh, an ALU is a, a complex component. It's, uh, uh, it supports several functions. So you have the ALU, you have uh, different inputs, and it can support any opera operation. So it's a, a fundamental component in the, in the design of the data path. Okay? And as shown here, uh, we have different operations. Okay? Now, uh, the idea here is the ALU control, as you can see in the diagram, the ALU operation is four bits. So this will signify the, uh, the type of operation that the ALU will control, uh, will perform based on the ALU control. Actually, in the book, it's in appen Appendix A. Okay? So makita nyo kung paano design yan at the circuit level. It composed, it's composed of full other and other, other, other components, okay? And in order to uh, determine, so what we're trying to do here is, okay, the ALU operation can perform this basic, this basic operations, the ALU, uh, the ALU component, right? Now, how do we select which among, the, among these will, uh, uh, are we going to use? Because remember, that the ALU is shared by the three classes of instruction. So in addition to these uh, control lines, we also need to have uh, an additional ALU op, which will allow us to determine uh, what the ALU will perform depending on the instruction that is being executed. Okay? For example, if we are doing a load, okay? if we're doing a load instruction, and the ALU should output, the ALU control should output 0010 because the load instruction, what is 0010? 0010 is add because the load instruction will, will need to perform an add. So uh, you use this, uh, you should, uh, the, the, the ALU control should output this value. Okay? How do you do that? So you have to specify this particular additional two bits ALU op, right? And you have this, uh, value here, right? And the opcode field, will, uh, we'll, we'll see that later, the opcode field will determine, uh, uh, it, it shows here X, meaning the opcode field is irrelevant, right? It's don't care, basically, right? So the same with other operations. For example, uh, store, uh, for the store instruction, the ALU should also perform an add so the ALU op will be zero, 00. So it's somehow indirect, uh, two-level, multi-level uh, control. Okay? Instead of just having everything to be controlled by the main control unit, you also allocate uh, 
an ALU control unit which controls specifically the ALU. Okay? So sa compare and branch on zero, so zero, uh, zero one siya, and then ano yung operation na ginagawa? Zero one one. So it simply pass input B. Okay? So basically that's the idea. Okay? And the interesting uh, instruction is R type. Because it's the actual Kumbaga, ito yung uh, essence talaga ng ALU. Nag-a-add siya, nag-subtract siya, nag end or or Whereas the other instructions, parang service unit lang nila yung ALU. Ito, main talaga to. So, the ALU op is 1, 0, and then this will be the output. Okay? And the op code, okay, is also important because it specifies the type of instruction itself. So, add, subtract, okay? So, it's essential that we review the instruction format. Okay, so yung opcode field, this is actually uh, for the R instructions, you have 21, bits 21 to 31, okay, uh, for the for the loading store, 21 to 31, and then 26 to 31 for the conditional branch instruction. Okay, uh, so I hope you're getting this uh, 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 concepts here. Okay, so given this, given this setup, okay, uh, we can actually uh, uh, design the main control based on this instruction. So, uh, the important thing to remember here is first, we need to design the ALU control which will control the ALU and will determine what operation to perform on the ALU and we have another control unit which is the main control unit and this will be in turn connected to the different control lines previously. How you get the idea? So this is a data. So somehow this is a more complete uh, view of uh, the processor that we're designing. But uh, the control unit, kumbaga, parang black box siya dito. Okay? Uh, the details on how to actually implement the control unit is discussed in Appendix C of the textbook. Okay? Nandun siya kung paano ba ini-implement to. So as you can see in this diagram, the main control unit, the input will basically be the instruction instruction uh, instruction uh, word with ops uh, with bits 21 to 31 okay kasi siya yung magdedetermine based sa opcode niya ano yung gagawin niyong operation okay that's why it's index here 21 to 31 okay how you can follow that now this one is an uh, an example execution of the r instruction okay so uh, yung details nito nasa book okay uh, but uh, looking at this example, this R-type instruction, paano ba yung sequence of steps na ginagawa sa R-type instruction? Okay. So it's, it can be divided into four steps. Uh, the first one is the instruction uh, fetch. Okay. So this is the, remember we have two memory, two, two memories. We have the instruction memory and the data memory. So the first step is fetching the instruction. Okay. So let's say you have an add operation. Uh, let's say you have the add x1, x2, x3. So this is a three register operands. Okay. So ang gagawin niyang una is to fetch the instruction. Okay. Tapos uh, i-increment yung program counter. So this is the first step. The second step will be... Uh, Two registers will be read from the register file. So, papasok na ngayon siya dito. Okay? So, <coughs> notice na meron ditong multiplexer to determine kung saan manggagaling yung register 2. So, register 1, saan manggagaling? Yung register 1 ay manggagaling sa bits 5 to 9 of the instruction word. Okay? Bits 5 to 9. Nandito tayo sa R-type instruction, ha? so bits 5 to 9. So this is the uh, first register. Okay? And then the second register will come from either uh, 16 to 20, okay? 16 to 20, or 0 to 4. Okay? Zero, uh, 0 to 4. Okay? So that will be determined uh, based on the value. Okay? Uh, and then... After that, uh, the ALU will perform its operation kasi nakuha niya na yung, ano, yung inputs niya. And then lastly, okay, the result will be written to the uh, will be written back to the register. Okay? So, kasi 
Ang ganda nangyari dito, uh, x1 plus x2, nilalagay sa x3. Okay? So, si x1 nandito, si x2 nandito, then si x3, babalik dito. Okay? So, that's the idea of the date. Uh, the, uh, the, for the R-type instruction. Okay? Now, for the load instruction, the same mechanism, it can be divided into four steps also. You have the fetching of the instruction, uh, the register uh, is read from the register file, okay? perform the computation, and then uh, write back to the memory or to the, uh, to the register. Okay? So that's the idea. The brush also the same. Okay? So those are just examples uh, because uh, today our main topic actually is uh, pipelining. Okay? So pipelining is essentially overlapping the operations. It's a form of instruction level parallelism. Meaning, when you say instruction level parallelism, the programmer doesn't even know that this is hap doesn't need to know uh, this in order to write programs that take advantage of uh, parallelism. Okay? Kasi ang, ang idea ng parallelism is okay, you can improve the performance by overlapping the execution. Okay? And actually, what we are interested here is improving the throughput. Ibig sabihin, uh, Hindi bibilis yung individual computation, pero pag madami kang load, madami kang ginagawa, pwede mong pabilis, mapadami yung, uh, yung madami mong ginagawa, pwede mong compress in short period of time. Okay? So, the analogy uh, described in the textbook is yung paglalaba. Naglalaba ba kayo? Okay? Kung naglalaba kayo, ano bang hand wash ba kayo? Automated. Okay? Or may washing machine. So sa book since modern na yung ano uh, first world country yung ano yung US so malabang meron silang washing machine. So here's the idea. So, you have the washing machine, you have the dryer, you have the folding step and you have the uh, paglipit. Okay? So sa so, paggagawa ng laundry, naglalaro ka, tanggalin mo yan diyan, may dryer ka, may mo, fold mo, lipit mo. Okay? Like that. So, if you do that, so halimbawa, ito yung example niya, no? task order. So, first task, gabi siya naglalaba eh. Okay? Alas 6. Okay? So, isang oras siya, uh, isang oras siya net yung timer dun sa washer, isang oras din yung dryer. Uh, hindi ko alam kung bakit, uh, at 30 minutes pala, 30 minutes. As 30 minutes din na mag-fold, 30 minutes na mag-fold, hindi naman yata. Depends sa dami. And then, paglagay sa aparador. Okay? So, kung marami kang load, uh, sequential mo yan, aabutin ka ng alas dos ng madaling araw. Meron mo sa inyo gumagawa yan. Malamang wala naman. Okay? So, if you do some pipelining, pag natanggal mo na yung uh, nalabahan na, na nakalagay mo sa dryer, pwede ka ng uh, maglagay doon sa washing machine okay, ng ibang load habang hinihintay ito. And essentially, kung apat na batches yung lalabahan mo, di color, puti, puti alimbawa, uh, brief or socks, okay, ng batches, pag gumamit ka ng pipelining, matatapos ka ng 9.30. That's the essence. Okay? So, Ganun din yung gagawin mo sa, ano, sa pagdi-design mo ng processor. Okay, so sabi natin kanina, merong mga, itong mga instructions na to, pag in-execute, merong parang specific steps like fetching the instruction, decoding the instruction, executing the instruction, and then finally uh, storing the result either in the memory or either to the memory or to a register. Okay. So, you can see here that... Uh, the speed up is somehow proportional to the number of uh, stages. Okay? So, ang tawag dito ay isang stage. Okay? Okay, you get the idea? So, simple lang naman yung concept ng ano. Okay? Uh, yung ibang mga, bawa, yung, yung anak, inutusan ng magulang, maglaba ka anak. Okay? So, ang gagawin niya, i-extend niya to para kunwari busy siya. Okay? Okay, ginagawa pa ako, naglalaba pa ako. Pero nag-Facebook pala habang hinihinta yung ano, common style. Now, since our uh, example architecture is, instruction architecture is leg V8, okay? uh, it can actually 
we can actually divide the, the steps in the pipeline into these uh, five uh, stages. The first one is IF, this is, which means instruction fetch from memory. So remember the von Neumann architecture, fetch, decode, execute. I expand lang natin yun. It's the fetch, the decoding, and the execution. And then maybe do some, uh, when you perform the execution, you need to access some memory and then write back the result to a register. So these are the steps that we can actually uh, pipeline. Okay? So, yeah. so regarding the pipeline performance. Okay? So in this example, this illustrates, so parang, okay, let's, uh, I forget to forgot to mention no, that what we're, what we're designing here is a single cycle processor. Okay? When you say single cycle processor, in one cycle, okay, kailangan na complete na yung execution ng instruction. Kahit anong instruction yun, basta sa loob ng one clock cycle, dapat ano na yun, tapos mo na yung instruction na yun. And yung clock cycle na yun, may time duration yun, in actual wall clock time. Okay? So, let's assume the time for stages is, so ito yung stages natin, i-assume natin na bawat stage dyan, meron siyang certain time. Pero remember na ito, lahat to isang clock cycle lang to ha. Parang ang ginawa natin, yung isang clock cycle, yung timeline natin, uh, edge triggered siya. So ito yung isang, isang one clock cycle, ang ginawa natin, inartation natin siya into five stages. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, ito yung instruction fetch. Okay? Ito yung instruction decode. Ito yung uh, execute. Ito yung memory. And ito yung uh, write back. Okay? Nakakuha niyo yung idea. One clock cycle pa rin siya, pero divided siya into different stages. Okay? May ino ba yun? Okay? And the example na to illustrates the performance. So, assume time for stages is 100 picoseconds for register, read, and write. Okay? So, syempre, sabi natin, the register is, uh, is uh, fast. Okay? So, 100 picoseconds. So, halimbawa, yung pag-load instruction ng ginamit mo, pag nag-read ka ng register, so within the single clock cycle, that will be 100 uh, picoseconds. Okay? And uh, uh, for the other steps, like ALU operations, memory access, okay, instruction fetch, lahat 200 seconds as shown here. Uh, 200 picoseconds as shown here. Okay? Now, uh, in the single cycle da data path, okay, in total, ano nga yung, di ba sa quiz last time, ano yung uh, time nung uh, gagamitin natin for the clock cycle? Ito yung longest executing instruction. So as you can see here, if we have a single path, a uh, single cycle data path, itong buong to, based on our, based on our given, okay, based on our given, itong buong to ay 800 picoseconds. Kasi among all these instructions, it's the LDUR which takes the longest. You get the idea? Kasi pag ang ginamit mo ay 700 picoseconds lang, hindi niya kayang i-cover yung sa load. Tama ba? So you have to use 800 picoseconds. Okay? Kaso, ang problema naman dyan is kahit CBZ ang ginamit mo, CBZ ang ginamit mo, since ang clock cycle mo ay 800 picoseconds, ibig sabihin, sayang no, uh, 300 picoseconds na gagamitin mo for generating the single clock cycle na 800 picoseconds. You get the idea? So, that's what we mean. So, ang ginawa lang natin dito is for each of the stages, what we did is to simply specify concrete amount of time. Okay? Para ma-determine natin ano yung, kung ano, paano natin siya ipa-pipeline. Okay? So, <coughs> Uh, for example, so we are given this uh, so single cycle, we have uh, the 
total time 800 picoseconds. So, ano nangyayari? So, yung LDUR, so, somehow, alam nyo na ang ibig sabihin ng instruction. Ito, mag assembler assembler code to, ah. So, ibig sabihin nito, ah, uh, yung base red yung register x4 nandun yung base address niya tapos ito yung offset number niya which is constant 100 okay yung memory location na pinupointa nitong dalawang to yung contents noon ilalagay sa register x1 so these are load instructions okay so 1 100 uh, offset 100 offset 200 offset 400 based on the base register okay so for the for the execution of this instruction, okay, so meron siyang fetch reg alu data access reg 800 picoseconds. Okay, so this is a load instruction. Okay, and then kung walang pipelining single cycle lang siya, hihintay mong matapos yan, hihintay mong matapos yan, hihintay mong matapos yan. So all in all, uh, tatagal ka bago mo matapos yung tatlong instruction na to in a single cycle. Okay, however, if you introduce pipelining Okay. So, itong instruction na to, di nag-instruction fetch siya. Okay. So, pwede mo nang simulan yung execution ng next instruction by doing the... Actually, actually hindi naman execution actually, but rather fetching the next instruction right after uh, fetching the previous instruction. Okay. So, at this point, pwede mo na siyang i-fetch, okay? And then, uh, meron lang konting delay dito, okay? Bago kung magkaroon ng read, ng read pero pwede mo na i-fetch siya, okay? And then, you get the idea, okay? So, mas mapapaaga ngayon yung uh, completion ng, ano, ng, ng, ng execution ng tatlong instructions. So, again, you are given here a set of instructions. Okay. So, you get the idea. So, dito, 200 picoseconds. Yan. Pwede ka na mag... After 200 picoseconds, pwede ka na mag-fetch mag ng next instruction. Unlike dito, kailangan ko maghintay ng 800. After 800 picoseconds. Okay? So, that's the idea of pipelining. So, pipeline speed up. Ano ba, when you quantify how much speed up can you obtain if you do some pipelining, okay? If all stages are balanced, okay? Uh, when you say balance, uh, all the stages are, basically they take the same time, okay? Then you can have a formula, like the time between instructions, pipeline is the time between instructions, non-pipeline divided by the number of stages. Okay, so this is the formula. Okay. Basically, divide the, the time between instructions in the nine, that pipeline with the number of stages. Okay. So that's somehow the speed up. So the speed up is due to the increased throughput. So I would like to emphasize this, that it is not the individual execution of the instruction, but rather the increased throughput. Because even though we say uh, the... Uh, Diba, recall we have throughput and response times in the in the, our discussion about performance. Okay? So somehow when you improve throughput, if you have a large large set of instructions, large number of instructions, somehow may may improve din yung kanyang response time, di ba? Kasi ano ba yung yung tatlong load na to, ba yung tatlong load na to ginagamit para to pag display ng ano ng ng or, or pag download ng files. Ini execute plato na isang program na download ng files. And if you are do, uh, uh, downloading uh, a large file, okay, so per packet yun, for example, so you're do, you're doing this uh, instruction, you're repeating uh, the, the execution of this instruction several times. Then eventually it will speed up the, the entire process. Okay. So the latency, the, the latency, the time for each instruction does not necessarily increase. Okay. So again, it's the throughput that is increased. Okay. So pipelining and uh, instruction set architecture design. Okay. Now, when you design an instruction set architecture, somehow you should also consider na mag-implement ka ng pipelining. Okay. Yung previous discussion natin, 
of the single cycle data path. Uh, yun yung parang traditional way of doing things. But kung halimbawa, you are asked, oh, magdi-design ako ng bagong processor architecture, magdi-design ako ng bagong instruction set architecture, ano yung mga kailangan akong i-consider? I need to consider when I design the instruction set na kaya dapat siyang mag-support ng pipelining. And luckily, yung example architecture natin, yung leg VA, supports, kumbaga, inherently by design, sinusupport niya yung pipelining. Paano niya sinus paano mo paano masasabi na yung instruction set architecture ay sinusuport niya yung idea ng pipelining. So ito yun nandito, okay? So the leg V8 ISA is designed for pipelining. First of all, all instructions are 32 bits. Ibig sabihin, fixed length instruction. 32 bits lang yung kahit anong instruction yan, lagi ang 32 bits. Unlike in the x86, pwedeng 1 byte lang or pwedeng uh, 15 bytes. Kung baga variable, nagbabago yung, ano, yung length ng instruction. Ito, fixed lang. So if you make your instruction uh, fixed length, like here, 32 bits, okay, then it's easier to fetch and decode in one cycle. Kasi, di ba, uh, pag nag-fetch ka, okay, Pag nag-fetch ka, isang buga lang, ilabas mo na lahat yan, yung 32 bits na yan. Kasi yun yung buong instruction word niya eh. Ah, buong instruction niya eh. Okay. So, madali na lang yun. Okay. Uh, the second property of the LEGV8 ISA is that few and regular instruction formats. So, ibig sabihin, uh, you can decode and read registers in one step. So, konti lang yung instruction format niya. Meron lang tayong R-type, meron, meron tayong tayong D-type. Kung baga, somehow simple, okay? Yung uh, instruction format niya. Uh, this is an example. This is the basic example of the instru instruction format. Uh, okay. So, simple lang. Yung kanyang instruction format. Ito lang yung kanyang instruction format. Pag din, binasam yung entire documentation ng x86 sa manual ng Intel, nakita uh, mo, nakukonfuse ka. Iba-iba yung organization ng ano, bawat instruction, per instruction. Okay? Yung, move, yung move instruction mo, maraming variant. Makikita mo yan, pwedeng 1 byte, 2 bytes, 3 bytes, depende. Okay? Pero move instruction lang yan. Okay? So, uh, the next one is uh, load and store addressing. Okay? So, uh, Yung pag-address ng memory, okay, can be done easily uh, in the third stage of the... Uh, the calculation is done in the third stage, ano yung thir uh, third stage natin. So, dito pwede mag-perform ka ng ALU or calculation of the address. So, uh, sa stage 3 pa lang, pwede mo nang gawin yun. And you can access memory at stage 4. Okay. And uh, the alignment of memory operands, so, kumbaga... It allows you to access uh, memory in just one cycle. Okay. So given this simple design, okay, uh, the given this simple design, okay, it's very easy to create a pipeline version of uh, the leg V8 uh, processor. Okay. Okay. So However, merong mga ano, merong mga tinatawag na hazards sa ano, sa pipelining, okay? So, ang goal mga sa pipelining is uh, to increase the throughput by uh sample doing simultaneous fetching of uh, instructions, okay? Merong kang mga pwedeng ma-encounter na issue dito, okay? So, examples would be uh, structure hazards, okay? When a required resource is busy, when you say a required resource would mean functional unit. So, halimbawa, busy pa si, ano, si ALU. Okay? Hindi mo pa siya pwedeng gamitin kasi meron pang instruction na gumagamit sa kanya. So, that is structural hazard. Okay? Yung data hazard naman, ito yung may mga data dependencies. You need to wait for previous instruction to complete its data read-write before you can do the instruction. We'll discuss this uh, uh, later in detail. And then lastly, the control hazard. 
So, you deciding on control action depends on the previous instruction. Yung mga branch instruction, okay? Parang ang idea nito, kung may branch ka, CVZ, uh, X1, tapos let's say 0, X, 7, C, 0, 0. Okay? Paano mo i-implement tong instruction na to in a pipeline manner? Na hindi mo nga malalaman kung i-execute mo ba yung next instruction dito or mag-jump ka dito. Okay. Kasi hindi mo pa alam yung value dito eh. Okay. So that is part of control hazard. Okay? Now be before we proceed with the discussion of the hazards, uh, meron nga pa lang ano dito, uh, example. Uh, I tried to look for an example of the implementation of the this kumbaga parang simulation ng leg V8 architecture okay so you can uh, uh, this one okay so punta ka dito sa SRG ICS UPLB okay uh, this is i just forked this from i think project to ng ibang students sa ibang university okay in implement nila in uh, very lab is a uh, is a uh, parang equivalent ng VHDL okay yung description ng ano ng leg V8. So you can try this. So, halimbawa, uh, so nandito yung ano, yung iba't ibang version. So, natapos na natin yung ano, yung uh, single cycle na example or na parser design. So, nandito yun. So, this will be uh, uh, the example. And you can actually try this in Linux. I think I've, I've tested this. Okay. Uh, yan, yung arm V leg. It's so, And, uh, fail pero uh, so this is how you implement that uh, how, how you, so kailangan nyo install muna ng i very lang okay? so di ba sa sa lab ghdl yung gamit nyo di ba tapos gtk wave for the visualization dito i very lang icarus uh, very lang so you can install this to the app install i very lang so this is how it's done okay uh, saan na ba ah so, nasa da, da, sa single cycle dapat tayo. Okay. So, it will create an executable CPU test. Okay. Tapos, and then, uh, ibang command para i-view yung ano. Yan, ito. Okay. So, so, this will uh, actually execute the processor. Okay. So, if you want to look at the source code, uh, halimbawa, uh, meron, meron siyang compiler, uh, assembler pala. So, mag-e-enter ka ng instructions. Halimbawa, yung kanina, add x1 x2 x3 eh may error yung ano uh, may exam may example sa dito okay, so you can just try that ah uh, uh, to L ldur so the load instruction so mag-generate siya ng ano ng hex okay so this will be the machine code or this in hex this is the bi the binary code okay and that can be placed in the ano uh, that can be placed in the processor so uh, if you are doing a single cycle uh, so uh, baka si baka meron sa may interest sa inyo na magkaroon ng interest na implement to in VHDL. Okay. So, ito. Ito yung memory niya. Okay. So, this is the instruction. Di ba? Sa single cycle, we have the instruction memory and the data memory. So, this is how the instruction memory is implemented. So, you have the program counter. Okay. And this, so, uh, how do you map this in the diagram, in the lecture? Uh, to map this in the lecture, uh, 
So remember that our instruction memory is this one, right? So it has the program counter here, and then the instruction, right? So in the code, that will be the program counter with 64 bits, kasi yung leg B8, and then you have the actual instruction. Sabi natin, the leg B8 instruction word is 32 bits, so 0 to 32. And ito na yung actual contents ng memory. So yung kanina, yung instruction, for example, this uh, LDUR X2 uh, X10, ito yung equivalent niya na pag nilagay mo sa memory, okay, ng instruction memory, kasi i-execute nyo ito individually, no? So yan yung kalalabasan niya. So you get the idea. So you can experiment this kung halimbawa nalilito kayo puro theory yung dinidiscuss sa, sa, sa lecture, paano ba siya in actual nag-work? So you can use this uh, command, okay? So, siguro magagawa nila ako ng assignment para dyan sa inyo, para matesting nyo yung uh, sample na yan. So, you can see here the, the result. Diba, anong ginagawa nyo ay GHDL yung, ah, GTK wave para makita nyo yung result, diba? So, dito, nag-generate siya ng PNG para uh, makita nyo yung uh, Okay? So, you can try this okay, para mas maintindihan nyo ngayon yung, ano, yung implement. So, meron yung dalawang, yung iba't ibang version na binil sa textbook ay in-implement nila. So, kung kayo ay interested na mag-implement yan sa VHDL, that would be nice. Okay. So, let's go back to the different hazards. So, we're in introducing pipelining and the first one is structure hazard. Okay? So, structure hazards, the conflict for use of a resource. Okay? In leg V8 pipeline with a single memory, so, yung load and store requires data access. Okay? And the, what will happen is that uh, pag kailangan mo ng data access, kailangan mo ng uh, ang tawag doon stalling. Okay? Para magpo-post ka muna. And that would, uh, that would cause a bubble. Okay. So, the main reason, okay, kasi unang reason natin last time is bakit kailangan hiwala yung instruction memory sa kadata memory. Sabi natin, kailangan kasi sa isang single, single clock cycle matapos mo na yung buong instruction. Okay. Now, kung meron kang pipelining, okay, another reason of having uh, separate uh, separate memory for data and instruction is, of course, this structural hazard, okay? So you have, uh, you need to have different, uh, uh, different uh, memories for, for the instruction and data, okay? Now, the next one is data hazard. So this is illustrated in this example, okay? An instruction depends on the completion of data access by a previous instruction. So let's say you have this instruction, R x19. So these are registers. So this is x19, that is the destination, uh, x0 and x1. Okay. And the next instruction is subtract, uh, x19, x10, so two. So if you draw the uh, different stages in the pipeline in a time, time diagram, right? so this is uh, what will uh, happen. Okay. So, parang mali yung drawing niya dito. Okay. So, the important thing to remember here is, okay, may pipeline ka. Pero, di ba kanina, uh, sa drawing kanina, parang sa nagbilihan niyo. So let's say something like this. So, uh, but the fetch the original instruction. So, the data hazard dito is the uh, gagamitin mo na 90, the register 90. Ay malamang hindi pa nasusulat. Ay hindi pa nasusulat. Kasi right back then. Uh, yeah, itong stage na to na right back. Okay. So that's an example of uh, a data hazard. So this also is another example. So, uh, ano bang ginagawa dito? Okay. So, you 
have this instruction. I load mo sa x1 yung register x1 yung memory yung value na nasa memory na pinapakita nito. Okay. So tapos yung x1 ginagamit mo dito sa so. Okay. So if you look at the pipeline uh, para ma-load sa x1 na register yung uh, contents ng memory ng isang so may instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute. So it is only after this 1, 2, 3, 4, stage 4, akala magkakaroon ng, uh, magkakaroon ng uh, way para makuha mo yung value ng x1. Okay, tama ba? Pero essentially, kung wala ito, kailangan hintayin mo siya sa mag-drive pa. So, the idea here is yung iso, hindi agad siya makakapag-start ng execution niya. Okay? Kasi, hihintayin niya muna ito. Tapos, eh, kailangan yung input na yun sa sub, di ba? Kailangan muna yung input na x1 dito ba sa execution. Kasi ito yung ARU, di ba? So, when you design that, kailangan yung start nito, kung baga, ito yung reference mo, ito may yung parang magiging start nito. Right, you get the idea of the data hazard? Hindi mo siya pwedeng i-forum dito, tama ba? Ito, hindi mo siya, hindi mo siya pwedeng i-forum dito. Kasi, dito mo pwedeng makuha yung value ni x1, right? So, this is the issue, that's why I brought concept, uh, the, the hazards that can be uh, seen in this pipeline, data hazard, right? Basta ang tandaan nyo dyan, hindi ka pwede bumalik, hindi ka pwede bumalik dito. Kasi, ano pa rin naman yun? May timing, may clock, may clocking pa rin naman ang nangyayari dyan. Okay? So, ito na yung pinakalik, ito na yung earliest na pwede ka, pwede mong gawin ko based on this. Because of this data hazard. Okay? So, yung bubble, ang tawag dyan, nag-stall ka. Okay? So, pause ka muna. Okay? Hindi mo may implement yung uh, 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 yung uh, pipelining. Okay? So, to address that, okay? to address that, uh, yun, ito nga, pwede kang mag-create ng tinatawag, pwede mong i-apply yung tinatawag na forwarding or bypassing. Okay? Kung baga, hindi mo nahihintayin pa, okay? dito kasi, ang nangyari, hinihintay mo pa na makuha sa memory something like that. Okay. So, pwede mo ang gawin, pwede i-bypass mo na. Okay. So, itong example na to, okay. itong example na to, okay. yung idea ng forwarding, don't wait for, for it to be stored in the register. Register uh, requires fixed connections to the data file. So, yung ganito ng instruction, no? add x1, x3, x3, sub x4, x1, x5. Okay. Kung hihintay mo ba kompleto to, so nasa right back pa yan, too late na. Okay? Pero, actually, by doing some forwarding bypassing, paglabas mo sa ALU, alam mo na agad yung value, di ba? Paglabas mo sa ALU, alam mo na agad yung value. Huwag mo nang hihintayin na dumating pa sa dulo. Gumawa ka na ng linya. Ikabit mo na siya, may wire ka na. Amin ko na yan dyan para pagdating dito, pwede mo siya i-input sa uh, execution sa ALU, dyan ka na mag-a-adjust. So, ito na yung magiging pipeline. Okay, you get the idea? So, that's uh, what we mean by forwarding and by passing. So, it's more of an overview pa lang naman, but we'll discuss in the detail kung paano siya i-implement sa NEGBA. Okay, get the idea? Okay. So, However, uh, meron din siyang uh, hindi hindi all kumbaga hindi silver bullet yung forwarding, okay? So the uh, meron yung tinatawag na load use data hazard. You can't always avoid stalls by forwarding. Uh, if value not computed when needed, okay, you can't forward back in time. So uh, this one is an example. So para din, so you can uh, you need to further delay, okay? Bago ka makapag
You really cannot avoid that. Okay. So, then. so how do you avoid stalls? Okay. So, as much as possible, you want to avoid these bubbles. Okay. Sa so, gusto mo, may ginagawa na agad yung processor mo. Wala ka ng parang hang time dyan. Okay. So, one way to do that is uh, scheduler. Uh, I mean, code generator. The assembler uh, or the compiler will do that for you. So, for example, right, so code reordering. Right. Ito yung original uh, code. Right. And then, notice na meron yung story ng mangyayari dito. So, LD, Wallet, then meron din dito the UR add so pag nag stall ka this will uh, take about 13 cycles okay. so pwede mong gawin you can reorder the code so ito yung code niya mismo no? uh, you can reorder the code in such a way na may prevent may, no, may eliminate yung stalling and you will get only 11 cycles Right, you get the idea? So, anong point niya? So, iba sabi natin, uh, bakit, bakit uh, hindi na ginagamit yung assembly ngayon? Okay. Bakit wala na nagpo-program sa assembly ngayon? Okay. Basically, because of some of these optimizations. This can be better done by the compiler. You get the idea? So, halimbawa, so, ikaw, uh, 1v1. Uh, ito yung gagawin ko, move ganito, move ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Hindi mo, hindi mo ma-realize na, teka, baka mayroong story na nangyayari dyan, pati yung explain siya. Pero the compiler, may algorithms ka, yung algorithms, meron mo siyang ginagawa para pag-generate niya ng code na to, ito yung i-generate niya, hindi ito. So, kung ikaw, estudyante, sinabi mo ng Riza, okay, gawa ko nga ng assembly mo dyan, yung leg, uh, leg B8. Ito yung gagawin mo. Tapos, yung compiler, si compiler na generate mo, ito yung generate mo. Ano mas maganda yung performance? Yung kinode mo, ito yung generate ng compiler. Yung generate ng compiler because yung CPU time niya, this will be only 11 cycles for us, the one that you go, 13 cycles. Okay, you got the idea? So, we'll stop here and uh, see you next meeting. Okay, so, five points yung mga pangalit niyo. Five point. Bonus, bonus question. Malang question. Dahil mo tayo kayo. Kaya kung hindi kayo kaapo. If you feel fair ba yun? Okay, so see you next week.